Hey, SpongeBob. Do you think all of the people around us are really just robots? I don't think that's what this one's going to be. It says it's SpongeBob conspiracy number seven, the robot invasion theory. So how would the robots invade? You think that they just march up to the doorstep? That's pretty obvious. To be oh, a conspiracy... you just think that, like, everybody is robots? I don't know. And that's the way that they Maybe it's like a Five Nights at Freddy thing where they're just animatronics. They're just robot fish? Yeah. I don't know about all that. I, I, I did not see the alien theory going the way that it did. But and it, it did. was wild. It was and it wild. And it felt pretty accurate, as most of these do. Yes. So what's going on in the chat... Dr. Dell saying the, the robots have taken over the Navy. Not the Navy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> apparently, people describe SpongeBob as perfect hangover TV, says I don't Tom Sorton. Oh, I don't know, all oh. the voices. Oh, uh, yeah, the high pitch and yeah. the yelling. I've just noticed that as I've gotten older that like all cartoons are people yelling we were watching stuff. bob's burgers and it was just like what is going on right now yeah people just <laughs> but yelling as a kid, shit totally never noticed it <laughs> aqua finesse connoisseur says robussy ro ro jesus all right so everything spongebob conspiracy number, number seven. seven this is the lucky one supposedly all right all right so i admit it some of my theories have been a little crazy lately. I mean, Goofy Goober alien death cult theory, Pearl's dead mother theory. Let's maybe try was... and slow down a bit on this one. Yeah, right. There is a secret robot invasion happening in Bikini Bottom. Everywhere you look, robots have integrated themselves into society, kidnapping and replacing people with robots. You are right. Waiting for their chance to Tell rise you. up and start the robot apocalypse. This is not a joke. I repeat, the robots are coming. The robots are coming. This is the robot invasion theory. Uh oh. Sorry, what? You okay, dude? Uh, yeah, sorry, um, I've just got a lot on my mind lately. How's the, uh, Spongebob theorizing going? It's good, it's good, um, I'm actually thinking about maybe stopping. Why? They're huge! Yeah, I mean, people watch them, it's just... I didn't go to film school for three years just to make Spongebob theories forever. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just something you're doing now. It doesn't mean you have to do them, like, forever. It's easy for you to say. I mean, what, you're a year out of film school and you're already directing commercials? Yeah, but I didn't go to film school to make commercials either. It's just something I'm doing for now. Like Spongebob theories. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, these, uh, these videos also just, they, they take a lot to make. I'm not sure if I'm up for it anymore. Dude, up for it? You just like watching cartoons all day, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I would kill to have as many followers as you, man. I'd be set. I've been trying to get my film funded for months, and I still have nothing to show for it. You know, sounds like a pretty sweet gig you got there. But... Hey, it's time for another SpongeBob conspiracy. Wow, I just Sponge realized I've, uh, I've been making SpongeBob videos for over a year now. Uh, definitely did not think that I'd still be making these a, a year later. But it's all worth it, right? Because you guys love them, and I love making them, and they're they're super easy to make. Uh, uh, the sponsor. Time to talk about today's sponsor. Do so you apparently like these are action-packed oh, mobile games? Epic rosters with hundreds of characters to play and bosses to fight. Well, then you'll love Wine from Bright Cellars. <laughs> you know, after a long day of SpongeBob theorizing, I like to crack open a nice cold wine. Mm. Wow. Red. But here's the thing. I don't really know anything about wine. That's why it's good. Bright Cellars has got my back. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine subscription service that helps people discover wines that they'll love. First, you just take a quick personality quiz, then they send you a box of wine specifically based on your taste. Each wine comes with educational cards that tell you how to best That's serve cool. it or what to pair it with. Trust me, they know you better than you know yourself. Mmm, mmm. This is the uh, Forever Fleeting. Very good, very good. I'm getting a little bit of a... Uh... 
little bit of peaches, which is nice. Kind of reminds me of the the peach cobbler my mom used to make me as a kid. <laughs> Bright sellers, they they always know. They always know. A little bit of a little bit of apricots too. Kind of like the first kiss I ever had at the Sadie Hawkins dance. Apricot lipstick. How did how did you know that, Bright sellers? Oh my god. Orange Blossoms. My Gam Gam used to call me her little Orange Blossom. How did you know that, Bright Sellers? How did you know that? Bright Sellers is offering 50% off your first box. Wow. That's six He's all about the suspense and drama, yeah. right? That is a lot of wine for that price. Ba -ba -ba hey, hey, you gotta be 21 or older to order, okay? No kids. No kids. Wine's for adults. Adults like me. Just go to the link on the screen to get you 50% off. Now that I've drank in my wine, I will begin the theory. Drank in his wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking this is very Terminator. One of my favorite episodes mm. of SpongeBob is the season three episode Crab Borg. SpongeBob watches a scary robot movie, mm -hmm. then gets super paranoid about robots taking over, and even kidnaps <laughs> Mr. Krabs. What? You think I'm a robot? We don't think. We know. It's a really funny episode, but I can't help but wonder if SpongeBob's fears might be a bit more justified than we thought. No. In the episode SB129, we get our first glimpse Such of the a future weird of Bikini episode. Bottom, 2,000 years later. Okay, uh, oh. what's going on here? Why is everything chrome? Everything is chrome in the future. We see a world <laughs> covered in chrome, where everyone has been replaced with robotic people. SpongeBob, is that you? SpongeBob? No! I am SpongeTron! And this isn't the only time we see a future full of robots. In the Season 7 episode, Back to the Past, SpongeBob time travels to an alternate future where Man Ray takes over, and once again, people have been replaced by robots. And then, in the second SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, there's a deleted Didn't scene where it. SpongeBob and Plankton go to the future and see this. We did it! I wonder when we are. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what year this is? <gasps> Cyborgs! We didn't go back in time! We went front in time! And there's even foreshadowing in episodes that take place in the present. In the Krusty Krab training video, we hear this. Well, luckily for you, Mr. Krab's fear of robot overlords keeps the balance of technology in check. And in Insecurity Guards, hmm. we can see an exhibit that clearly shows the evolution of SpongeBob eventually getting taken over by robots. Okay, what? so there seems to be a lot of evidence for the future of Bikini Bottom being taken over by Dang robots. It. But honestly, why does any of this matter? I mean, robots ruling the world is a pretty common depiction of the future in lots of different media. And even if this is the canonical future of the show, it's at the very least thousands of years in the future. It's not like we can already see this robot invasion happening in present day Bikini Bottom, right? Here's an interesting question about Spongebob that's always bothered me. Why are there so many robots in the show? And I'm not talking about Sandy or Plankton's inventions. It makes sense for them to have robots since they're both genius inventors. But mm. why do hospitals and office buildings and amusement parks and Weenie Hut Juniors and many, many more places have such advanced robots? I mean, let's ignore the fact that they're underwater and robots wouldn't really make sense down here. Bikini Bottom isn't like a super advanced society, right? You wouldn't really say that they have much futuristic technology except when it comes to robots but why and what's even stranger is that there are many many instances where these robots suddenly turn evil the first time i really started to notice this was in the season 7 episode tunnel of glove spongebob hmm. and pearl get trapped in a glove world boat ride that's full of animatronics patrick tries to set them free by breaking into the control room but accidentally oh my God, are, you are you right again turn evil and attack spongebob <laughs> It's like Five Nights at Freddy's, dude, I'm telling you. Now, this is a pretty basic cartoon trope. Someone accidentally breaks the controls, then the robot malfunctions and turns evil. This isn't really all that weird for SpongeBob. Except, what's strange about this is that Patrick doesn't break any controls. He hits a button labeled Animatronic Override, and that's what causes the robots to turn evil. I'll just gingerly... Oh. Huh? They aren't malfunctioning. The robots were intentionally designed to have a button that makes them attack people. But why? 
Then, in the episode Good Neighbors, Squooper discovers a flyer for a home security system that's suspiciously free despite it clearly being very advanced. After he sets it up, his house suddenly grows arms and legs and starts destroying Bikini Bottom. It sounded like he said Scooper. Whoa, Squidward's house is Scooter. destroying the neighborhood. Now, to be fair, this was a malfunction caused by SpongeBob, but why would a simple home security system have giant arms and legs? I mean, the malfunction didn't create them, they were clearly already installed. They eventually do manage to stop the house, but what's really creepy about this is that we can still see signs of Squidward's house being sentient after this episode. Then, in the season 11 episode Krusty Cleaners, SpongeBob and Patrick go to an office building and encounter a trash cleaning robot. The robot immediately attacks them for causing a mess. <laughs> But this time, there's no malfunction that causes this. It's working exactly as intended. Not only uh. does the trash robot have a buzzsaw and a literal laser cannon, but it also turns all of the nearby machines into killer robots to help hunt down SpongeBob and Patrick. Shit. So, where are all these places getting these super advanced robots? And more importantly, why are they all being programmed to suddenly turn evil? This is a question that stumped me for a while hmm. until I watched the season 11 episode, My Leg. This is the episode where I truly realized there was an actual conspiracy theory here <laughs> and not just cartoon antics. It's time we finally find out. Out, who is behind the robot invasion? Plankton. That's the obvious. Google. Answer. Oh. Shit. <laughs> oh no no no. He's got his play button. So it's Squidward. Yeah, how's it getting ready to say? If you got a giant tentacle monster, that will not probably hey, not gonna help you. Um I'm still serious about you leaving this house. It's not that I don't appreciate everything you built for me, it's just Oh, sh oh I thought that I shadow was a tentacle. Very different things. You know, I don't I don't want it to come to this, but I will I will use force if I have to, so you better go. Uh, uh, uh. Oh shit. Can't even have a SpongeBob thing without, without jumping. jumping. The episode Who is My Leg focuses on the reoccurring mm. gag of this one fish always injuring his leg throughout the show. My leg! My leg! My leg! At one point in the episode, he goes to a hospital and meets a robot that works there. It's just a small throwaway gag. The robot never turns evil or does anything strange. Don't take my leg! Don't take my leg! But there's something awfully familiar about the robot's design. Let's go all the way back to the season 3 episode Plankton's Army, you might which be right. opens with Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula with a robot disguise. You never know what trick he'll use to steal me secret Krabby Patty formula. What a quaint restaurant. I think I will sample their wares. These robots have an uncanny similarity, right down to the same tie. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the maybe we could just chalk this up to the showrunners being lazy and reusing assets. But SpongeBob has always had a pretty diverse amount of robot designs throughout the show. And it's not like this is a direct copy-paste either. They went to the effort to redesign the face and colors, but it was still clearly based on Plankton's robot. So yeah. here's my theory. Plankton has built many robots to try and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula, but I think after he fails to do so, he doesn't just throw them away. He redesigns the robots and then gives them to different businesses in Bikini Bottom hmm. with the intention to one day use them to take over the world once he has enough in place. I mean, Makes you know what sense. Plankton really wants isn't the secret formula, it's to rule the world. I yeah. will rule the world! And there's even the video game Battle for Bikini Bottom where Plankton tried to take over using an army of robots. So this theory doesn't seem too far-fetched for Plankton's character, but we're gonna need a lot more evidence if we're gonna prove he's the one behind all the robots in Bikini Bottom. So, let's get started. In the season 3 episode, No Weenies Allowed, we see a robot working at a place called Weenie Hut Juniors. Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, Weenie? And while it doesn't resemble any of the robots we've seen Plankton make, does that voice sound familiar to you? Would you care for another Karen? diet cola with a lemon twist, what a quaint restaurant. I think no. I will sample their wares. And again, it's not like this is the default robot voice 
we hear in SpongeBob. There are many different voices the show has used for robot characters. What a quaint restaurant. Greetings, I am Robo 2.1. No threat detected. This is very uncomfortable. Leave my father alone! But here, hmm. they specifically recreated the voice from Plankton's robot. Let's go back to Glove World for a second. In the control room, we see a machine on the wall that looks shockingly like SpongeBob. So the much so that Patrick even mistakes him for it. We know Plankton has built a SpongeBob robot before in Welcome to the Chum Bucket. Maybe he repurposed it here inside of Glove World. In Krusty Cleaners, the trash robot also has a striking resemblance to Plankton's robot in the Season 9 episode Eek and Urchin. In the Season 5 hmm. episode The Patty Gadget, Squidward tries to get SpongeBob fired by replacing him with a machine that creates Krabby Patties for free. But it's never explained where Squidward got this machine. Now, it doesn't resemble anything we've seen Plankton make, but a staple in a lot of Plankton's inventions is having them resemble his likeness, especially with one eye in the middle, and that's exactly what we see with the patty gadget. And the patties it makes are terrible, which would make sense for something Plankton made. In the episode All That Glitters, SpongeBob buys a super advanced talking spatula. <laughs> Les Spatula 3000 at your service. But in the episode Evil Spatula, we find out Plankton has a whole collection of advanced spatulas just like this one, and even huh. tries to trick SpongeBob into taking a talking spatula. It seems like no matter where we turn, we can find a connection between the technology in Bikini Bottom and Plankton. But, if you remember in those glimpses of the future, the world isn't just ruled by robots. They've actually replaced all the existing citizens with robot copies. I am SpongeTron. And believe it or not, this is also something we can already see happening in Bikini Bottom today. Get ready to see how far this robot invasion has really gone. I don't think so. Hey! Hey! Victoria, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, I was just around, thought I'd stop by. Can I come in? Or? Uh, inside? Inside? Uh, no, no, no. It's just, it's not a good time right now. Um, in all honesty, it kind of seems like you're going through something. I just wanted to check in on you. Uh, I appreciate that. It's just, I'm fine. You know, uh, it's just the, the SpongeBob stuff is been keeping me really busy. I'm a little stressed about that. And, um, but I'm, I'm fine. You should, you should probably go. You're being really weird. You're not answering your phone. You're living in total darkness. Can you just talk to me? What's going on? Yeah, like turn all okay, the lights fine. on okay. in we the can talk, just, just not here. Fine. Do you want to get coffee or something? Sure, fine. Yeah. Um, uh, I gotta put something away. Just stay right here. Now, we know Plankton has tried to turn people into robots before. SpongeBob, come in here! <laughs> or should I say Robot Bob? But he gave up after robot SpongeBob Bob. was too annoying. <laughs> You've got to take that yellow nightmare back! <laughs> it's not worth it! But I don't think this was his only attempt. In the Season 11 episode, The Checkup, SpongeBob and Squidward are trying to give Mr. Krabs a health checkup by testing his pinching reflexes. Okay, I brought plenty of things for Mr. Krabs to pinch. A uh, pinch of salt! Ah! <laughs> I've never seen is that. A baby. A baby's <laughs> Wow. Lucky that was a robot baby. Hmm, some random baby just robot turned into baby. a robot and it's never explained why. That's weird hmm. even for SpongeBob. But things get even more interesting when we go back to season 9 in the episode Plankton's Pet, where Plankton tries to steal a Krabby Patty using the exact same purple baby as a robot disguise. That diabolical fiend! I can't believe this is working! And we're not even done yet. If we go even further back to the Season 5 episode, Goo Goo Gas, we can actually see the exact moment where Plankton gets the idea to turn the baby into a robot. Why, you're so tiny and helpless, I could take your formula whenever I wanted to, and you couldn't do a thing about it. <laughs> That's it! Finally, victory will be mine! Now, in the episode, it's implied that this is just him getting the idea to turn everyone into babies to steal the formula, but isn't it crazy how it also perfectly lines up with the purple baby fish suddenly turning yeah. into a robot in future episodes? Now, there's another fish who's always been very suspicious to me. Mm. The strangely uh. realistic news anchor fish. All of the 
Bikini Bottom is a buzz over the identity of a mysterious flying man who helps people. Son of a who bitch. Who knows what superhero act of courage he'll astound us with next? In a show full of cartoon characters, why is he the only realistic one? In fact, I made a whole theory about how there are evolved cartoony fish that can talk and primitive realistic fish who can't. But as many people have pointed out, the one exception to this is the realistic news anchor fish. Well, if you ask me, he looks a lot like one of those animatronic singing yep. fish you buy in a gift shop. Especially the way he mechanically moves his mouth and how we only ever see one side of him. So, already a pretty strong indication that he might be a robot, but there's also something familiar about his voice. What kind of cruel, careless, Wait a second. Canvas all the seediest lowbrow dives in town? That's right, he has the same voice as Plankton. And if you're gonna take over the world, then you're definitely gonna want to control the media. But how exactly is there you have that. these people with robots? Well, I think the season 10 episode, Whirly Brains, gives us an important clue. In this episode, suddenly a new toy becomes extremely popular in Bikini Bottom, the world- <laughs> Don't <laughs> recall <laughs> that. and watch your brain soar under the beat yeah, it's, it's a weird episode. So, people are actually voluntarily attaching devices to their brains and ripping them out of their bodies. He's the original and Elon Musk. So this is suspicious. If you ask me, this seems like the perfect way to replace someone with a robot. Remember, in Welcome to the Chum Bucket, Plankton told us how he turns people into robots. I'll be forced to remove your brain and implant it in my robot chef! By removing their brains. But is there any proof that he's the one behind the Whirly Brain toys? Let's take a look at the new Spongebob. Bob prequel, The Patrick Star Show. Every once in a while, the show cuts to this stop motion parody of Frankenstein oh, with cool. Plankton. And he actually uses Whirly mm. Brains to conduct his experiments. It's not super clear how this all connects to the main show. I mean, we do see Patrick interact with the stop motion Plankton at some point, so they're at least in the same universe, but regardless, it's still a solid connection. We see another head based gadget in the season 11 episode, Bottle Burglars, an invisible helmet being advertised in a magazine for only 99 cents. And in invisible. the same episode, we see Plankton using the exact Exact same helmet. Crabs will never see me coming in visos. Now, maybe this is just implying that he bought the helmet from the magazine, but that doesn't really line up with what we know about Plankton as an inventor. Plus, I can't see them selling a tiny version of the helmet just for Plankton. Seems a lot more likely that Plankton created the helmet and is selling them to the people of Bikini Bottom, possibly as a way to create more robots. Probably so. Right, so we're starting to get a pretty clear idea of how Plankton plans on turning the citizens of Bikini Bottom into robots. But there is one more character that I believe has already been secretly assimilated into a robot. And it's not some random background character either. It's one of the main characters in SpongeBob SquarePants. This final part of the robot invasion theory is going to completely change the way you look at the entire show. Are you ready? Because this is the Patrick Star theory. Dude, where did ha, did you watch this? Ah, I've never seen it. Poor Gary the cat. Gary is also the name of the snake. Shit. Victoria? 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 Who's Victoria? The girl? The girl, yeah. Now, I fully realize saying Patrick is a robot is a very bold claim, but yeah. hold your judgments till the end. By far, the most requested theory I get on this channel is to cover Patrick Starr, and more specifically, his inconsistent intelligence. Throughout the entire show, there are these little moments where Patrick suddenly says something smart. I'm a bit more complicated than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. And then immediately goes back to being dumb. There's so many examples of this happening that many people have actually made their own theories about it. Is Patrick secretly a genius and just pretending to be dumb? Does he have a secret split personality? I diagnosed Patrick Starr with trauma-induced anxiety triggered spontaneously duplicative multi-intellectual DID with additional paranoid schizophrenic delusions of a mental multiverse. Uh, uh, maybe, but I've come to a bit of a different conclusion. It's a lot have for ever Patrick. Have how every time we see Patrick try to think, there's either sparks or smoke coming out of his head? Oh. Wait a second. Patrick 
faking again. And almost every time we see inside of Patrick's head, it's represented with gears or some kind of machinery. Now, we're supposed to assume that this is just a cartoony way to visualize thoughts, but what's strange is just how consistent they are with it. And even stranger, none of the other characters' thoughts are visualized this way. Just got an order from the boss. Dump everything that isn't about fine dining. Squidward's happy gland is forced to take shelter in the recesses of his mind. It's only Patrick who seems to have this robotic association with hmm. him. And just look at how detailed they are with it. While Patrick's head is sparking in a rule of dumb, if you look closely, you can see a spring pop out of him and even a hole left behind by the spring. That is such a small detail that no one would notice unless you were going frame by frame. And if this is just supposed to be a metaphor inside of Patrick's head, how come SpongeBob clearly sees the spring come out? Okay, okay, so let's entertain the idea for a moment that <laughs> Patrick might be some sort of robot. How would he have gotten converted, and why does this cause him to randomly become smart every once in a while? Well, I looked at all the scenes where Patrick suddenly does something smart, and I noticed a bit of a pattern. There are two different types of these moments. There are times when we think he's saying something intelligent. Mike SpongeBob, we're not cavemen! We have technology! But then it's revealed he's not actually being smart. <laughs> this doesn't contradict his character at all. Patrick is someone who doesn't see himself as dumb, so there's lots of times when he tries to be smart, but he fails. Dumb people are always blissfully unaware of how dumb they really are. <laughs> But there are also moments where he actually does do something undeniably smart. Wait a minute, Squidward. They might be onto something. We could filter the CO2 through our ballast tanks, refire the engines, and ride the shockwave out of here. Wow. He's right. But then he immediately acts oblivious to the fact that he was being smart. We're going through with your plan, Patrick. Yay! What plan? So, I kept track of these two different types of moments, and it seems like after season 3 is when he suddenly switches from pretending to be smart to actually having these smart moments. And this switch perfectly lines up with the season 4 episode, Patrick's Smarty Pants. In this episode, Patrick falls off a cliff and gets his head knocked off. SpongeBob accidentally replaces his head with some brain coral, which makes him become a genius. <laughs> I find all this laughter to be highly illogical. In the end, they switch back to his normal head and Patrick goes back to his usual stupid self. But take a closer look at the scene when he first puts on the brain coral. Here's your head. Now, many people have interpreted these gears with cobwebs as a metaphor for Patrick's brain never being used until now, but these gears are not from Patrick's brain. His brain came off during the fall, which means these gears are entirely from the brain coral. And at the end of the episode when they remove the brain coral, we can still see the electrical plug attached to it. We are no longer seeing a metaphorical representation inside of someone's head. We are seeing mm. this plug from an outside perspective. The brain coral is just like the Whirly Brains, a robotic device that plugs into your brain to control you. Isn't it convenient that Patrick just happened to land next to a pile of coral that looked identical to his head? Is it possible that Plankton saw this as an opportunity to add another victim to his no. robot invasion? But after Patrick I mean, removed it, he went back to normal, right? He completely stopped Plankton's plan, right? Well, one season later, in the episode Sing a Song of Patrick, Patrick attempts to use his brain again, and we see the exact same gears inside of his head. Come on, you stupid brain! Work! The creators went out of their way to recreate the exact placement of all the gears from the brain coral, which means the head Patrick put on at the end of Patrick's Smarty Pants was not his head. It was another piece of robotic brain coral. But it seems like for whatever reason, this brain coral isn't as effective as the first one, and he's only able to have rare moments of genius. In the season 12 hmm. episode, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, Patrick has another one of his smart moments. Oh, would you look at the hour? It's almost time for me to take SpongeBob on that tour so you guys can take his house. But this moment in particular is very interesting because Plankton is actually there to witness it. And take a guess how Plankton responds to him. Yeah, I guess even a broken moron can be right once a day. He calls Patrick a broken moron because he knows Patrick is a broken one of his experiments. And if you still don't believe me, in the newest episode of season 13, The Goofy Scoopers, we get this scene. This stinks. I wanted to go backstage for an autograph. Plankton was 
here. Yes, he certainly was. And that is the robot invasion theory. Wow. Thank you very much. Okay, robot invasion theory done. Hey, we just passed 500,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. This is honestly a dream come true for me. I mean, I've always wanted to have this many people watching me for um, SpongeBob theories. You guys wouldn't like all immediately unsubscribe and leave me if I stopped making these, right? Uh, thanks again for watching. I've been your host, the, the SpongeBob guy. I will see you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys. Bye. Victoria. Where's Victoria? Do not give me the silent treatment right now. I swear to God, if you did something, I'll... Fuck. Oh my God! Victoria, where were you? I was using your bathroom. Why the fuck are you pointing a knife at me? Shit, uh, okay, it doesn't matter, okay? You, you cannot be here right now. No, I am not leaving until you tell me what's going on. Uh, listen, listen, I promise I will explain everything to you later. You just, you cannot be in here. Why are you so afraid of me being in your house? Victoria, I promise you, this is not the time. We have to leave right now. Your muse isn't gonna eat me! What? You mean the big... Tentacle monster in my basement? Yeah. How do you know about that? I have one too. What? Didn't see that one coming, did you? So, like, hold on now. So, all filmmakers who are popular have these tentacle muse monsters hey, living in their basements. We have Shorty, <laughs> you know, and uh, we have Launch. I don't know. I don't know. They're their own little fiery gremlin monsters. This one, there were times when I was like, Oh my god, like, I've never even considered that. Like, there's no way. And then he would put it together and I was like, oh, well, there's no way for me to not believe that. Right. And then he got to the coral thing. And I get where he's coming from, but... I, just... I don't think Patrick's brain has been replaced by a robot brain. I believe everything up to the point of where it's just like, yes, Plankton is trying to take over the world. Yes. I'm sure he has replaced some people with robots and is making robots to yes. be violent and terrible. Yes. That's where it ends for me. Because the coral thing, I get, like, you know, it looked the same, whatever, but do I think that Plankton made somehow robotic coral brains so that maybe Patrick could possibly one day fall it would be different if you pushed him. Right. Or, I don't know. He would have to have done a fuck ton to Th that part line that like, one up. Mm, yeah, I, I agree that. with you on that. Yeah. Damn, for a kid show, this gets pretty off the fucking rails, doesn't it? The more that we watch these, the more that I realize, like... There's a lot more going on than my I little, ever thought. My little cousins, this explains a lot. <laughs> I mean, I was obsessed, you know. It was... It's a good Nikki description. Yeah. This explains what's wrong with Thomas, too. <laughs> we see you, Thomas. But, yeah. What a fucking crazy... Uh, what a fucking crazy series so far. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be one where he's like... Um, Go ahead and predict it, because you figured all this one out before we watched it. I, we have yet to see one where the conspiracy has to do with some kind of magic... To make all of the animals or the sea creatures and shit sentient and everything. Because he already explained why. I know, but... It's not magic. The, the theories contradict each other. I don't think that's going to To a certain happen. degree, I think that there's going to be magic involved in one of them. Or some magic. kind of... A, either a curse or a spell or something. No, the has, whole point is like he is telling you why these things are. So if it was just magic or just... A curse or just Well, you asked me to guess, happens. and then I do, and well, then you're, you're just, like, shitting all over it. The next one. Magic is involved. Oh, my God, the news anchor. I, I kept being like, that oh, is that such that's a familiar plankton. voice. Yeah. And I never connected that. 
to the same voice actor or or that it was possibly plankton maybe you guys so think that that's plankton because maybe I never so thought of that. anyway i think that that's going to do it for this one yeah we appreciate you guys checking us out and if you enjoyed this video you should definitely go and subscribe to alex mm -hmm. uh what is alex, alex bale. bale yeah mm -hmm. he's he's got over 700,000 subscribers Ooh. now, and you could be one of them. You could be one yeah. of the 700,000 pushed to, towards 800,000 if you just go subscribe to yeah. his channel. If you liked our reaction to it, you could always give us a like, subscribe to our channel, even mm -hmm. give us recommendations for things you would like for us to watch in the future. Yeah, you can do that down in the comments below. You can do that on our Discord, or if you are a patron on our Patreon, you can do it there. Yes, you can. You can also catch us on live stream every Monday and Thursday evening at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Also, we live stream at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time exclusively on Twitch. We do these reactions live like we are now. Shout out to Onyx the Gaming Machine, Dr. Dell, Aquafinussy, Crimson New Type, <laughs> all the homies hanging out. Thomas Horton, Dr. Dell, and Thomas Horton are our moderators. You yes. can talk to them in the comments and and in the chats of our mm -hmm. live streams. They're really, really cool people. Yeah. Um, also, guess what else we do? Community Game Night, the yes. last Thursday of each and every month. So if you want to actually play games with us, hang out with us, and be involved in that situation, feel welcome to uh, subscribe to our channel, yeah. follow us on Twitch, and uh, we will see you there. Yeah. But for this video, I think that's going to do it. It's going to do it. See, see y'all.